Unsurprisingly, not only U-boats but all submarines were a very hazardous place in which to work. They were often under attack by enemy ships, sea mines, and depth charges, not to mention exposed when they breached the surface. To put those dangers in context, there was an astounding 75% casualty rate among U-boat submariners. It was the highest casualty rate of any German military force during the Second World War. Besides being dangerous to live and work in, the U-boat could also be damn unpleasant. One needs to remember that 59 men lived in a cramped, fetid space barely bigger than a typical subway carriage. Consider that the U-505 had only two tiny restrooms, and one of them was even used for a time to store food. No proper bathroom facilities meant that the crew never bathed. They instead cleaned their bodies by swabbing themselves with alcohol, and this could go on for two months at a time while out on patrol. Not only was the U-boat a horribly cramped space, but temperatures in the engine room could exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or more than 40 degrees centigrade. Add to that the smell of diesel which permeated the entire submarine to the extent that even food tasted like diesel. One can only imagine how hellish these working and living conditions could have been for a man literally on the verge of a nervous breakdown, such as Peter Schech. Peter Schech enlisted in Nazi Germany's Kriegsmarine in 1936, and quickly ascended the ranks. He was made a watch officer on the destroyer Z-7 Hermann Schumann from July 1939 to April 1940. By October 1940, he was training in the U-boat division. His first assignment on a U-boat was in August 1941 on U-124. His time on U-124 included four highly successful patrols in which the U-boat sank 22 ships and damaged three more. It was invaluable experience for the young Shet. His superiors noted his leadership qualities, and so he underwent commander training with the 24th Flotilla in August and September of 1942. Peter Scheck would realize his ambition by taking command of U-505 on September 6, 1942. It was the height of the war, and Germany was still in the ascendancy. There were high hopes for Scheck and his U-boat career. The very first patrol with Scheck at the helm lasted 69 days. It was during this patrol that Scheck sank his only ship. It was the 7,173-ton British merchant vessel, Ocean Justice, which was hit and sunk off South America. Tellingly, it was the only patrol that passed without incident on board U-505. It didn't help that U-505 was besieged by repeated acts of sabotage. These forced the U-boat to return to port on a number of occasions. The sabotage was being done by French dock workers at the Port of Lorient on behalf of the French resistance. These acts of sabotage included a hole deliberately drilled in a diesel fuel tank and faulty welds on parts which should have been repaired by French workers. These interruptions were so regular and so disruptive that Scheck achieved only six patrols spanning a total of 96 days out of the almost 14 months in which he was in command of U-505. If one takes into account that his first patrol at the helm of U-505 was for 69 days, then that means the other five patrols totaled just 27 days. That is a very weak record compared to other U-boats under other commanders. As further proof of just how poor things were on board U-505, three patrols lasted just one day each before having to return to port for whatever reasons. And these aborted patrols all took place in August 1943. What was going on in that U-boat commanded by Peter Scheck? Was it only sabotage and technical issues, or was it something to do with his leadership of the U-boat? Unfortunately, Peter Scheck, as commander of U-505, was not liked by his crew. His crew described him as self-absorbed and only interested in his own welfare, while being a hard commander and indifferent to the morale of his crew. He also had a bad temper and would fly into fits of rage. One of his crewmen would later testify that Jacques, although an ambitious young man, was a poor leader who lacked both nerve and skill. The constant issues suffered by U-505 were no doubt exacerbated by the fact that Scheck was so unpopular with his crew. It also appears he wasn't particularly brave or inspiring in his leadership. One excellent example of this was within the first month of his command. U-505 was heavily damaged due to an air attack in the Caribbean Sea on November 11, 1942. The 250-pound bomb dropped by a Lockheed Hudson onto U-505 resulted in its deck gun being ripped from the sub. Worse still, it severely breached the hull. And what was the response by Scheck? 
He ordered his men to abandon ship and let the sub sink, but his officers refused to do this. Somehow, they all managed to keep U-505 afloat for two weeks before the sub finally limped back to harbor in Laurier in the German-controlled Bay of Biscay on December 12, 1942. After the attack in the Caribbean, U-505 would get the distinction of being the most heavily damaged U-boat to successfully return to port during the entirety of World War II. It was a dubious distinction, however. Not only was U-505 stuck in port for repairs for six months, but she had to return to port on six consecutive occasions due to chronic engine issues. U-505 became so inactive compared to other U-boats that it became the butt of jokes among the U-boat command. One such joke against U-505 was in the form of a sign that greeted its crew after yet another botched patrol. The sign in the docking area sarcastically read, U-505's hunting ground. Sheck, as its commander, was especially targeted by other U-boaters. One joke was that while most U-boats were in active service and many were being sunk with all hands on board, it was said that there is a captain who will always return home. Sheck is his name. Sheck no doubt heard these jokes about him, possibly probably even from his own men given how much they disliked the man. By stark contrast, U-505's first commander, Captain Lieutenant Axel, was highly successful during his command. Leuve was only relieved of his duties in October 1942 and replaced by Scheck due to poor health. This is all quite surprising given what a distinguished officer Scheck had been until taking command of U-505. He had been awarded Iron Cross Second Class in December 1939, the Destroyer War Badge in October 1940, the U-Boat War Badge in December 1941, and the much-coveted Iron Cross First Class in April 1942. Why was Peter Scheck such a lousy U-boat commander after being showing so much earlier promise? We can never know. And why did he do what he did? Again, only he could have known that. While outbound east of the Azores, it all came to a head on October 24, 1943. U-505 had come under heavy depth charge attack while east of the Portuguese Azores Islands. The submarine had surfaced and had been spotted by two British destroyers. It was during the blitz of depth charges on the U-boat that Peter's Scheck apparently had a mental breakdown. It was in the control room of that he ended his life with his Walther PPK service pistol. Crew would later admit that Scheck had become lonely and isolated on board U-505. Such was his low standing among his men. All they heard that day while under attack was one shot from the control room. It was Paul Mayer, the 26-year-old first watch officer on U-505, who took command of the German sub and returned it safely back to the port of Lorient on November 7, 1943. Mayer had successfully evaded the enemy with a partially damaged submarine for two weeks. Incredibly, Mayer was not even commended for having restored calm on board and managing to get the submarine safely back to port in France. All the Kriegsmarine High Command did was somehow absolve Mayer of all blame, which seems bizarre. One can only assume that they were tired of U-505's endless issues and the clear lack of discipline among her officers and crew. The suicide of Scheck had devastated his crew, even as disliked as he may have been. And now, the high command had diminished what Mayer and the entire crew had achieved with U-505 after the Azores attack. Unsurprisingly, after that the little morale that had remained among the crew of U-505 was shattered. Various requests by the crew of U-505 to be transferred to other U-boats were flatly denied by the U-boat command. One can only imagine how morale must have been on board U-505 thereafter. But perhaps the crew of U-505 got their revenge after all. It may very well explain how U-505 became the only U-boat to be captured intact on the surface, and that on its very first patrol after the Zuchek suicide fiasco. U-505 was attacked on June 4, 1944, just southwest of the Canary Islands. She was promptly surfaced and abandoned by all crew, including its new commander, Harold Lang, leading to its easy capture by the Allies. The U-boat was then secretly towed to Bermuda for full inspection. On board U-505 was a treasure trove for the Allies. This included an intact Enigma deciphering machine, as well as that month's codebook issued by the Kriegsmarine and various other secret documents. Even worse, the Allies were also able to seize U-505's G-7ES acoustic homing torpedoes. 
These would be extensively reverse engineered in order to improve the Foxer decoy system deployed by Allied navies. The capture of the intact U-505 and all those secret documents, machinery, and munitions must have horrified the powers that be in Berlin. Perhaps the crew of U-505 should have been transferred elsewhere after all when they had so requested. U-505 truly had been a damn submarine, and no doubt a huge headache to the Kriegsmarine. As for Peter Scheck, he would become the only commander, and submariner for that matter, to have committed suicide while underwater during World War II. In fact, it's a distinction that he holds to the present day. After being stripped of all of its intelligence value, U-505 was preserved as a museum vessel. The much maligned U-boat is now celebrated as an indoor exhibit at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Illinois. Ironically, the U-boat that saw so much disharmony and stress to so many has outlived them all.